The uh, plaques that are here, the memorial plaques, are down there by the police car on the far side, and another one here uh, in front of the lighthouse. And it's the city's uh, standing ovation to the jazz artists and to the patrons who've made over the years, from the 1940s to present, Hermosa, the jazz corner of the West. And here you are. Thanks for coming. And I have here today Mayor J.R. Rabisky. Good afternoon and welcome to sunny Hermosa Beach. Uh, I don't believe in long speeches, so this is going to be really short, but I, I wanted to come up here and uh, welcome you all to Hermosa and also to uh, do something a little special for a guy in the back here. Ozzy, come on up here. He, he specifically did not want any recognition. And as a politician, I'm trained to ignore things. So, I have a certificate of appreciation and recognition from the city of Hermosa Beach for Ozzy. He raised thousands of dollars for these plaques, and uh, he certainly deserves this, even though he didn't want it. He's got to take it now. So, let's have a round of applause for Ozzy. Yeah, but I want the cash. Hello everyone, this is Howard Rumsey. I'm here on Pier Avenue in Hermosa Beach to tell you about all the jazz I've seen here since 1936. Let's start with the Hutt Ballroom. In 1936, there was a three-story building right here on this, on this it, it took up this full half block. In 36, I only came here to work at the Hut Ballroom, which was famous and which uh, was unique in the fact that they, it only had a Coke bar, it never sold any alcoholic drinks in there. And it was a, a dime a dance. We were making uh, non union wages of uh, $23.50 a week. And it was a traditional. Uh, ballroom style. Just like uh, all the other ballrooms up and down the coast at that time, only it was smaller, you know. It was for young people, and believe me, the dances there were really great. In 36, I went in everything there was in this town now as a curious teenager. <laughs> and there was a lot going on on Pier Avenue. <laughs> but we're going to go over there and take a look at it. The Domar Ballroom, it was built by the Zuka brothers, who, who owned Zuka's on Pier Avenue. Uh, and it was a brand new ballroom which had a second floor. And there was a unique in, in, in the fact that there was a slide and patrons could slide from the second floor down to the dance floor. A lot of important bands played there. It preceded what became the, the Hermosa Beach Aquarium. And uh, that's what happened to the Domar Ballroom. It was short-lived. It came late in the big band period, and that's one reason it didn't last long. But I, I worked there with Vito Musso. Now this is... We should stop right here. And this is the, where the entrance to the pier was, of course. The famous edifice uh, originally, the uh, Chamber of Commerce was on one side, and the a thespian group was on the other side. Local actors, a lot of famous, there were many employees that worked in the films around. Young men like grips, sound men, cameramen, and and they were very, very uh, enthusiastic jazz fans. We're talking about the uh, late 30s and uh, early 40s. We're talking about the fact that Zucas was a very prominent spot because it was 
where Jack Lescouli was working with a big band, and he later became the first band on Good, Mo Good Morning American TV show. And he came right out of this club, right out of Hermosa Beach. And uh, there were other people around here that were that t later turned out to be very prominent. Like uh, there was uh, uh, a, a disc jockey from Glendale who later, later became known as uh, uh, Brinkley of uh, Huntley Brinkley Television Newscasts. And he was a customer here in, in Zupas. In fact, uh, uh, a lot of different bands played there. I worked in there with uh, Jimmy Greer, the band leader from the Biltmore Hotel in Los Angeles. That would have been about 40, 43. Uh, when I was working there with Jimmy Greer, Joe Zuka signed my social security card. So that's how I know when Social Security came in, into being. But after it was down, taken down, on the corner was a brand new bar built called The Mermaid. And Frank Champagne owned that. And uh, it was really smart. Brand new, clean and everything. But, but when Frank died, yeah, and I think uh, that club burnt down too. But then uh, the Little Mermaid came into being, and Boots Thielen is still the owner of the Little Mermaid, and that's the transition that took place there. And uh, and 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 the Zuka brothers moved up to Culver City and bought the Casa Manana. Uh, they continued to present all of the famous jazz bands. Uh, 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 at different times, and, and I worked for them up there with Charlie Barnett's band, uh, which was later. Uh, but that's the, what happened on this corner. Before it was the high seas, it was the best known place on Pier Avenue. It was called Cassis. And it was a unique place with a, a coffee shop in front and a room in the back that had a dome ceiling and it had uh, little stars in the ceiling like uh, they used to do years ago. So, so it has to be mentioned that uh, Herb Ward bought the, put in the high seas in the same location as Castle but he redid it completely and made it all modern and new. And it was very nice. And uh, he also had a, uh, a saloon in uh, Manhattan Beach. So he was a, a, a mover and a shaker, and he was very important on, on the scene here at that time. Herb Ward employed some very fine musicians. Uh, he had uh, two bass players there at uh, different times. That both had worked with the Ellington band. And uh, uh, Wellman Broad from the uh, original uh, Duke band. And, uh, and uh, Ulysses Livingston uh, was also in the Ellington band. And, and uh, they were in combos there. But, but the most interesting group in, in the 50s was uh, Zig Galloway, a tenor player, who uh, was married to the great gospel singer Mahalia Jackson. And that's where Charlie Parker played when he came to, to the lighthouse to visit Max Roach, who was working with me at the lighthouse. So that's the story of the high seas. And, and of course, Cora Bryant played there. And uh, she's well known and uh, is very active in, uh, in the jazz scene to this day. And uh, she used to come down and sit in with us at the lighthouse. So it was, it was a really great location. Especially in the 50s, it was a community and a little, and it was a city with, with right here on Pier Avenue and around this intersection. 
and, and the merchants were very important people and nice people. Uh, the Club 22 was on the alley, and that's where Ted Vesely played with a fine Dixieland band, and uh, the, the lighthouse was next, and only uh, two brick walls separated each the band stands from one another. Dixieland on one side, and what we call uh, modern jazz on the on the left side. Then, uh, as we came up, there was a Safeway grocery store, and uh, there was a, a, a big drug store in there. And and there's the Bank of America on that side. We got here in 1936 to work at the uh, Hot Ballroom, and uh, uh, the, the lighthouse was Verpolate's restaurant, an Italian restaurant, and it was very nice. And, but they didn't have a band in there, they just had a piano player. Twelve years later, when I came back, uh, it was called the lighthouse. And, uh, John Levine was the owner. He bought it in 1948 on the basis of a wartime business. And uh, I went in there and went to work for John. And, and we worked together for 22 years on a handshake. And uh, it was a very, very wonderful, exciting, and beautiful period in, in my life. I love Hermosa Beach and everything connected with it. I met my wife here. 46 years we were married, and uh, on top of all that, we actually managed to come up with an international reputation in the jazz field, which is uh, something that I never expected to have. I think that's uh, uh, a wonderful thing about the Lighthouse. It, it, it met the time. It was in the right place at the right time in my land, and, and I'm very proud of the fact that Hermosa Beach took us into their community and accepted us and, and, and helped us build a, a, our reputation. grateful that I came down to Hermosa Beach. The 22 years that I was here was full of the most marvelous memories and music and uh, my friends, the musicians. Thank you, gentlemen, for all this wonderful music. And, and I'm, I'm giving back to Ozzy, and uh, I want to wish you continued success. Thanks for joining me on this jazz tour of Pier Avenue. Keep swinging and keep jazz on your mind. Happy 100th birthday, Hermosa Beach.